All righty, we are on moon base, I'm at base um, on 52B. Um, and five lines from the back. So he would walk into the, the Kohen Gadol would walk into the base Kosh HaKadoshim, the Holy of Holies. He would have in his right hand his um, the coals. On the left hand, he would have the incense, which he had put into a bowl. Now he poured back into his hands and after he put the, coal, the coals down, and then he would have to pour it onto the coals. So Tanan Milur, Command Amar Tsoivro. So we saw two opinions earlier, one that he sprinkles it around and one that he puts a pile of it on the, uh, uh, on the coals. So our Mishnah is like the opinion that says that he puts a, that, that he, he, he puts a pile of it on. Tani Chada Tzevra Pnima, Shehi One opinion says that he would put it on a pile on the inner side of the pad meaning more inward to the Besamekdash, to, the, to the, the, the Holy of Holies, meaning away from him. <coughs> and one says, no, it's towards the outside, meaning closer to him. In the opinion that says that it's inward of the Besamekdash, which is closer to him, which is farther from him, is logical. It's not me learn they warn him, or they teach him. He's be careful. And now on, on 53a, Nun Gimel Abedal, Shuleitaskel Mipanecha Shemeti Kavad. Don't start putting the spice on the coals closer to you, and then end up farther away from you, because then you're igniting the fire close, and then you're sticking your hand over, and you could get burned. So start far away, and this way you move away in case of some of it that comes from from hot coal to uh, actual flame, it's not going to burn your head. Tanarabha. Venosan esakteris ala esh lefne Hashem. The Pasuk says, and he will put the spices, the, 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 uh, bur- the torus literally means the smoke. This, the burning of the smoke, Allah Aish upon the fire, Lufne Hashem before Hashem, Vachisa Ananach Teres is a Kaparis, and uh, the, the smoke will cover uh, the Kaparis. So, what does it mean, Lufne Hashem? He will do it before Hashem. Shale Yitaki Mabachus Vikonis, he shouldn't do it on the outside and then come in with already smoking pan. And that is uh, the, the, uh, uh, to contradict the the hearts of the Sadducees and Sadukim, Sha'emrim, Yitaki Vechut, the Vechutz Vikonis, who say, no, you have to do it outside and bring it in. My Drosh, what Drosh did they say that made them think it should be done on the outside? Because it says in the verse, it is with the uh, cloud. I will be seen on the kaparas. So they say, which said, which they say means you should uh, do it on the outside, burn the spices on the outside, and let it smoke, and come in already smoking pan. What are you talking about? It says clearly in the pasuk, and he will uh, put the kaparas upon the fire in front of Hashem.
in came Matam and Lumar. Uh, so they said, in came out of a little Kibana and arose and folks. Well, then what are you going to do with this verse that says, with the cloud, you will come to, it, 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 you'll be, I will be seen in front of the Kaparis. He says, Malamish and Lisa, Malamish. That's just to tell you that it has to be, have spice in there that's going to create a cloud. Um, and there's a certain uh, plant called Male Asha, meaning something that raises up a cloud. That's the name of the plant, right? Male Asha. The mala ashan uh, would be put in amongst the spices. It would be uh, ground into it so that it, it gives off this this color of smoke. Menayin shen is about mala ashan. How do you know you have to put this in shenema? But he said, "I'm not going to put this. It's like a burnus because in that person, the pasuk it says he will put the burnings, the smokeification on the fire before Hashem, and the cloud will cover the cloud of the ktores will cover." The kapores, the the ark cover. Uh, malasha, which tells us that if you didn't put in the malasha, this spice that creates a smoke, I was missing any one of the other spices that have to be in it. I have misa, that would uh, be a punishable by death, not based in lugulit, but uh, that it is a. Uh, Heavenly death penalty, meaning he's got to be very, very careful to get it right. But typically, the Kamayal be here in Kamis. Say, there's another issue. Why do you have to say that? Because you brought in the wrong spices or a missing spice. Say, since it's not the correct thing, it's it, it, he's it, 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 he's his issue is he hasn't brought in, he's coming into the Holy of Holies without the necessary, he's coming in empty handed. The Torah says, you cannot co- just come into the Holy of Holies when you want. These are the things you need to do that in order to come into the Kodesh HaKadosh. And if you come in empty, that's a problem. And this is essentially coming in empty empty because he's he's coming into the Kodesh HaKadosh. He's coming into the Holy of Holies, and he doesn't have the correct spices. Amar says, we must be talking about he didn't know when he came in that he was missing spices but he's a doctor so therefore he's not going to be held liable for coming into the holy of holies with empty handed because he thought it was right but when he got there and he said oh my goodness I have the wrong can in here I have the wrong spices and nevertheless he put it on the coals that is where he's going to be held liable for putting on the wrong spices Ravashi Amar Ravashi has a different interpretation where this is a relevant point. Even if he knew when he brought it in and he knew when he put it on. To go in the Ayoshne Akhtaris. He brought in two spices, two sets of spices. One that's correct and one that's incorrect. So he's not coming in at the end because he brought in the right spices. However, uh, he's also, held, if he puts the wrong one on, he's going to be held liable. In any case, uh, the point of the matter is that it's necessary to say that if the spices are missing, all the ingredients is going to be held liable because uh, uh, that Abi Ali Mechayev to tell you that in any case that he wouldn't be held responsible for coming into the base Kodesh HaKadoshim, the Holy of Holies, empty-handed because he either didn't realize he was empty-handed or because he brought, he, he did bring the proper thing as well. And the Ayel Shlema was brought in a proper, uh, the, the proper amount. Akhtar Mechayev. Nevertheless, for putting the wrong spices on, for missing spice, the spices with the missing spice, the Kamak Ter Keteris Chasera, he's burning up uh, um, the, the spices, the Keteris, that are uh, uh, lacking. It's missing the correct spices, and he's going to be held uh, responsible. So it was taught. How do we know that he has to put in this special spice uh, called Mala Asha, which makes a pillar of smoke uh, go up? As we said before, the, the smoke of the Katoris will cover the Katoris, the Ark covers. And when it says, 
and I'm bring, you're bringing a verse to something that we already have a verse for. We already have the, uh, uh, um, the passage that says, Kibe uh, Anan, at the beginning of that uh, this section, which says, He shall not come at any point into the Holy of Holies, rather, Kibe Anan Ira It is with a smoke, with a cloud, that I shall be seen on the Ktaris, meaning you can only come in if you have a, 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 a cloud of Ktaris. So why do I need another puzzle to say that uh, that um, the cloud will cover the kaparis? Amar of Yosef Hakikam. So Yosef says this is the reason. Ainli ala Allah alei ma'ala Hashem ikam ala Hashem. I don't know that it's sufficient only if he brings the leaf of this plant ma'ala Hashem that brings that makes a pillar of smoke. How do you know that even the root is going to be bad? I think nun gimel amen. I didn't know that even the root is fine. He said that's what it says, as long as it covers the ark, the cover of the ark. I'm going to have bias, but says quite the contrary. The root of the plant, Mala Ashen, is going to be the one that gives the pillar of smoke. The the uh, the leaf of the plant is not. As, as the, the time we learned, uh, he, he would put in the root of this plant called Mala Ashen. And the smoke would come up like a, like a palm, like a, a, a straight up, like a stick. Until it gets to the ceiling. Once it hits the ceiling, it would crawl along the ceiling and come down the sides. And this way, the entire room would fill with smoke. Until the, till the Holy of Holies, the inner chamber, got, became entirely filled with smoke. Right, that, that's the one we saw earlier that they, right. they refused to share right. what, what it is, and then, um, it is. well, we know what it, we know its name, just don't know what it is. I mean, it's called, yeah. okay. and we know it has leaves. We know it has leaves and a root. Yeah, that, that, that tells us a lot. That eliminates most plants. Well, along the same lines, well, this, was all, this was all put together by Beis of Tinas. Right, yeah, Tinas. as Jules was saying, the Beis of Tinas were the ones that put it together, and they were the ones that wouldn't tell anybody what this plant was. Right, so what does that mean? He walked in, he came in, but he forgot to bring this plant. How could he forget? It's all mixed in. Oh, if somebody, now that he forgot, he, he brought in the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, mixture. He didn't want to well, use I mean, he, went, he tried yeah. to make his own. Yeah. Okay. So he went to he went to the wrong store. So he had to do it yourself instead of trusting base of Tinas, and they knew how to do it. Yeah, it was like I'm going to break the monopoly. I'm making it on my own. I don't know. Got it. You see, they, they tried, right, when they tried to break Beis of Tinas Monopoly, they, they went to Alexandria and brought in people to try and do it, remember? Yeah, I remember. So, what, is that is that Pasha that, that was based Honyo that they tried to get it from? Well, I not necessarily that. from Honyo, but it was people that may have had experience in this from the from the Honyo, um, people that would have learned it from those people, but not necessarily the ones that uh -huh. worked in Beis Honyo, because we know the ones that worked in Beis were not allowed to work in, in, uh, in Yerushalayim. In, in Yerushala. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Okay. Beis Chanio is the, um, when there was, uh, in Alexandria, when, when the uh, children of, of uh, uh, Shimon Atzad, the Shimon the Righteous, were, were fighting about who should be going other, Chanio, having been, having lost the position of Ben Gadol, ran to Alexandria and uh, had them build a replica of Beis HaMikdash and had his own uh, services done there. And then Kahanan that worked in in the uh, Alexandria, in, in Beis Hanyo, were, were uh, not valid anymore to work in, in the Beis HaMikdash. But these spice makers in Alexandria probably knew how to do it, or what they, they had their skill from from that. So 
Sorry? Strong union. Yes, the base of Tinas was a very strong union. In any case, it says that um, that the root was better for the spice than the leaf. Hello, my buyer. Rabbi says the other way around. Uh, only if you did the ikker, the 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 root mala asher of the plant mala asher. Alay mala asher. And how do you know that it's valid even if you just have the leaf of this plant? As long as it covers. Rav Shesha says, says like this. Only Ella el may. Maybe this is only true for the for the for the um, Mishkan in the desert. How do we know that this is true even for the Mishkan in Shiloh and in the Beis Hamikdash, the Beis Elamim, which is the the eternal house? How do we know that there as well that you, that you have to have the spice come in and 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 and, uh, and that's how he enters the Kodesh Hakodesh? So he says. Uh, that's why we need a separate verse. And when it says, no, you don't need a special pasuk for that, it already says, it already says, so shall you do for the oil made, the, the, the tent of meeting that dwells with you. So you need to do that wherever it is. So why, why do I need a separate pasuk for the rest of the, for not only the Mishkan, but the Beis Mikdash as well? And the Hafei Kamen, the Rather, this one it says, in the Elohim Yom Kippur. This is only on Yom Kippur, Shari Mos Hashana Minayin, on other days of the year. Um, how do you know that this is, uh, 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 that this is true? Uh, meaning that all other Ketoras, now all the days of the year, you didn't go, you didn't go into the Kodesh HaKadosh. But how do you know that all other Ketoras, for, for the Yom how do you know that all other days of the Ketorah, every day there was Ketorahs in the morning and the evening, how do you know that that Ketorahs also needed to have a spice that made the, the, the pillar go up? That's why it says it will cover, that it has to be the smoke that would go up and cover. Ravashi Yama says, no, the reason why we have two psukim to say that the smoke comes up, what is it to tell you that that's the smoke? And one is liakiv. This is something that comes up a lot when we're dealing with kachim, with uh, mitzvahs that show up in the base of mikdash. That the halacha is that uh, if, uh, that um, you need it to to uh, uh, the Torah would repeat it. That shana lavakasiv liakiv. That one, if the Torah only said it once, that means it's a mitzvah to do it, but not necessarily it would invalidate if you didn't do it. That's why it says. A second time to tell you not only do you have to do this, but if you didn't have it, it's going to be in doubt. One is there to tell you that it's prohibited, that you can't come in unless you do this. And the second is for the punishment that if the Kohen comes in not having this smoke and, and this cloud, it would be it, it, it held liable. So uh, this is the, the Tup Sukim. And, and this is the beginning of, of Parshas Ahare, which the, it talks about Yom Kippur. And it says over there that uh, you, you must come in. You can't come in any time to the Holy of Holies, lest he die. Rather, um, he will come in with a cloud. And then uh, 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 10 Pesukim later, 11 Pesukim later, it says, and he will put the Keturus on the coals, on the fire before Hashem, and the, <coughs> the clouds will cover. And that's the two Pesukim about the clouds. At the beginning of that parsha, it says um, uh, that it was after the death of the two sons of Aaron that Hashem said to, to Moshe, "Tell Aaron that this is that he can't come in whenever he wants the base kasher kedushin this way." So Tani, we learn, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Lazar says, "V'loyamus einish," and and he shall not die if he does it properly, which tells us uh, uh, the, that there is a punishment; he's held liable. If he doesn't bring in this smoke, uh, that that would cause a smoke to go up. And because it said, because with a cloud I shall be seen, that tells us that the 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 warning. Perhaps both of these were said before the death of the children of Aaron, which would indicate that they died because they transgressed this. That's what it says that Moshe or that this mitzvah was told. 
after the death of the children of Aaron, meaning that they could not have known this. So, well, maybe that means that both the prohibition and the punishment, the warning about the punishment, were said after the death of Aaron, and then they knew nothing about it. Um, so that's what it says, because with the cloud I shall be seen on the kaporis, and that is something they knew. That the warning that you know, they can only come into the Holy of Holies with a cloud happened prior to the death of of the children of Aaron, and the death, uh, uh, and, the, and the punishment that one could die, uh, came after the death of the children of Aaron. And my time, so, so where do you learn this from? Amar Rav, Rav said, Amar Rav says in the passage, Kiva Anunay Rav, because with the cloud I shall be seen on the cliff, I die in the and a Rav Eh in the future I will be seen. That when this was, which tells us that when this was written and when this was said, it was not yet seen. And if, right, and uh, that means it was prior to the death of the children of Aaron. Because the children of Aaron happened on the day of the inauguration, at which point Hashem was already seen, so to speak, on the, in the cloud on the uh, Mishkan. Because that's what uh, the, happened on the inaugural day, where it says that, they all saw the honor of Hashem in the cloud of, uh, upon the Mishkan. So that day, Hashem was already, quote unquote, seen at the Mishkan. Must be that when it says, and I will be seen in the cloud over the Kaporis, that happened prior to the death of Aaron. Well, if they had not been warned about the, the punishment, so what was the reason for their punishment? Now, uh, the, the various psukim, one Pasuk says, because they brought a Eish Zora, they brought a foreign fire, uh, various Pesukim, and many, many interpretations in the Midrash and in the Gemara as to why um, they, they, this happened to them, that they died. Elamai Taimi. So this Gemara says, what's the reason they got punished? In the time of Rabbi Lezer. Like we learned in the Brisa that Rabbi Lezer taught. Rabbi Lezer says the explanation for their death is this. The children of Aaron did not die for any other reason, Ella, rather only, but they did what's correct. But they ruled in front of their teacher without asking or telling or speaking to him. They just took the initiative on their own. And what they should have done was they should have called, they should have spoken to Moshe. But they ruled in front of him without his permission. Um, my drush, what drush did they say that made them uh, bring in a fire? It says on the Pasuk, and the children of Aaron shall put a fire upon the Mizbeah. So they said, oh, even if there's a fire that comes down from heaven, we are responsible to put the fire off. And instead of saying, Moshe, do we need to put a fire on because of that verse? Do we have to put it on even though that a fire came from Shemai? That's what would have been appropriate. But they didn't, and they ruled in front of uh, the in front of Moshe Rabbeinu um, without asking him. Um, even though a fire comes down from heaven, mitzvah of him and they have to bring it on themselves from themselves. So they went ahead and they brought a foreign fire, and it's called a fire foreign fire not because it was a foreign fire, because that's what it needed to be. They needed to bring in a fire, but they so the Gemara doesn't say that they were wrong, only that. In the, in the conclusion, they were wrong in the way they went about it by not talking to Moshe, but rather ruling on their own in front of the, their Rebbe, in front of Moshe Rabbeinu, without consulting. So, no, he was there. This is at the inauguration of the Beis I understand that. Of the mission. Yeah, okay. that's what Rabbi Lezer is saying. That they were not wrong for the they were not wrong for the for the fire that they brought. Only that it wasn't necessary. Uh, sorry, it was necessary. It wasn't the right way to do it. They should not have brought it. That's right. It's, it's completely disrespectful to Moshe to come in and say, 
no, this is not enough. We need to do this. But places, right? So this is a, a, a the the issue of of um, uh, of of mora halacha b'fnei rabba, one who rules in front of the The Gemara and Ervin, if you remember, had a uh, um, various stories and very harsh terms about someone who rules in front of in front of the Rebbe or even in the vicinity of the Rebbe. We saw us in Brochus with Shmuel and Navi. Yeah. He was high of Misa. He was high of Misa. Right. Now, Allah uh, uh, over there by Shmuel, but the, the Sugya is in here. Okay. Yatza Uvole Derach Knisasa. And then it says that he would back out, going out the way he came in. No, I mean, how do we know this? Upper Shmuel Barach Meni, Amar Abiyeda said, Upper Shmuel Barach Meni, he said in the name of Abiyeda, said, Amar Kroat says, Apostle, but Yavah Shlomo Labama, Shlomo came to, when Shlomo had built the, um, the, uh, it was building Mesa Mekdash, it says that Shlomo came to Bama, to the altar, Asher Be Gibbon, which was in Gibbon, Yerushalayim. Now, Gibbon and Yerushalayim are not the same place. Uh, now, it should, so it should say, from Yerushalayim. Um, uh, or to Yerushalayim. Why does it say that he came from the, he came to the Bama and give on Yerushalayim? As if like they're in the same place. What compare, what, what relationship is there between given and Yerushalayim? To tell you that his leaving Yerushalayim to get to Yerushalayim was the same as we, the coming to Yerushalayim and from Yerushalayim to Gibbon. Mabi Yosem Yerushalayim to Gibbon, pun of Klape Bama. Just as when he came from Yerushalayim to Gibbon, he was facing the altar and and uh, uh, because he was coming to the holy place, to the Bama, to, they, he would be facing it. Just as he walked in, he walked out facing the Gibbon Yerushalayim, pun of Klape Bama. He's facing the the altar to tell you that that um, when you come into the holy place and you walk away, you walk the same way you you, you came, meaning you're still facing uh, the Aron Kodesh. And this is the halacha that when you you, you go to the Aron Kodesh and you take take out the Torah, you put in the Torah. So when you take out the Torah, you can you face the Torah. So you always have to um, whenever the Torah is taken out, everybody is supposed to be standing and everybody's supposed to be facing the Torah or following the Torah as we see. But um, when the Torah is put back and you close the ark and you walk away, you don't turn your back and walk away. You walk back, uh, taking uh, three steps backwards at least. So also over here, the bama he would face it, and then when and he walked away, he walked backwards as well. So to the kahanim in there, uh, when they do, would do their avodah, the levim, the duchan, and the levim in their duchan, when they would stand on the platform to sing, they would also be facing. Uh, uh, where they were facing, and uh, they were stepping up and down was always the same way. The Yisrael, the Ma'amadim, and Yisrael, and the Ma'amad, which we learned, we learned about the Bnei Yisrael, would have representatives of Bnei Yisrael that they were on the Ma'amad, they would daven for the Kahnam, and they would, uh, they had special tefillahs and, and, and readings and fasting or whatever it was. So the Ma'amad also, they would have to do it that way, Kashem Neftarim, when they would walk away, they didn't turn around and walk away. Rather, they would still be facing, they turned their face to where they were, this, their focus on the, the holy place, even as they were walking over. So to a student walking away from his teacher, don't turn around and walk away. Rather, still continue facing and, uh, and walk backwards. When he walk away and, and say bye to Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan would want to go, um, uh, so he would bow, uh, uh, um, uh, um, and Rabbi Yochanan would remain in his spot until uh, Rabbi Yochanan would remain in his spot until Rabbi Yochanan would remain in his Rabbi Yochanan would Rabbi Yochanan could no longer be seen. So he would, out of respect, he would bow for his teacher who was going, and he would remain in his spot until he could no longer see his teacher. 
But if Rabbi Lazar was walking away uh, the other way, uh, where not Rabbi Yochanan, the teacher was walking away, but Rabbi Lazar was walking away, the student, he would walk backwards until he can no longer see his teacher. Rabbi, when he would walk away from Rabbi Yosef, his teacher, he would walk away backwards until his 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 uh, feet would 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 uh, collide from his from his from his till he would hit the ledge the the uh, the threshold of the um, the door and the porch. And the bear of Yosef Dama Amru, various of Dama Amru. Now we go to Nungimul Amid Base Amru Leila of Yosef. This is what Rabbi said, what was doing, um, uh, that he's walking away backwards because Rabbi Yosef was blind, so he didn't see it. So we, they would tell him he's walking backwards this way. Amalei yehei rave the terom reisha hakula karacha. Well, he, he was so uh, uh, impressed that his student was walking away in such honor to him. So he blessed him. May be the will of Hashem that you should be uh, elevated to the uh, head of the yeshiva of the city. Of your uh, of your uh, uh, of the entire city that you're in, I'm a Rabbi Alexander, I'm a Rabbi Levi. So Rabbi Alexander said that this is a halacha in regard to tefillah as well. In the name of Rabbi Shmuel Levi, I'm a spalit. When somebody is davening, when you complete the tefillah, you have to stay, take three steps backwards. So that's the, uh, uh, the that's the appropriate way. You take three steps backwards. And then you say, you give shalom uh, uh, to Hashem. That also the halach is that after you take three steps back, you need to remain in that spot that you ended up at least. Uh, um, so in Shachras, the halach is that you wait until uh, in that spot until uh, Kedusha, until the Chazan says, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. That's when you walk forward. Um, um, the um, by uh, Marif, where there is no repetition, so you don't have the chazan saying kadosh kadosh. So you need to remain there a, a few moments, at least as long as it would take to go to walk about six feet. So if there, just a few moments, but you have to remain in that spot. And the idea of remaining in that spot is uh, not to seem like you're running away from having daven tasha. You daven, you step back and walk away, and now I'm like, all right, I'm done. Bye, see you. So, Marshall and Talman, it's sort of like a student, Anifta Mirabi, who is who is saying bye to his teacher. If he immediately turns away from his teacher, it's like a dog going back to its uh, uh, to its um, vomit. Yeah, not so nice. Right? Dogs like to eat their vomit, and this, this idea of like you're. It, 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 it seems like you're turning away to something and disgusting. You're talking to Hashem. You take three steps back. I'm done. See you and run. Right? So rather, you take three steps back and remain there, meaning I'm not eager to run away from having spoken to Hashem. We see a Brisa similarly that says that one davening has to step back three steps after the conclusion of the tefillah. And then he says the tefillah of peace. And if he doesn't do this, it is worthy that he didn't daven because it means that he doesn't have respect for the one he's he's davening to. Rabbi Shami Amra, in the name of Rabbi Shami, it is said, that he bows to the right and then to the left. Now, right and left is is uh, is uh, relative, right? It's not east west. It's right left is is relative. So um, if he's davening to Hashem and he's bowing to the right, his own right, or so to speak, to the right of the of Shekhinah, which would be facing him, so the other way around, right? Shanema for it says, because from his right, Hashem, as it were, Hashem's right side, from there came the, the fire law of Hashem. And it says, from your side, a, a, a thousand will fall and 10,000 from your right side. So my what does it mean? And also it says, why do you need another verse? Maybe it's just saying that that uh, uh, um, uh, from that it's from the right side. 
the, that um, uh, uh, that's the way one would give something is using their dominant hand, and, but it's not more uh, precious or, or more valuable the right side. So, um, uh, so that's just I'm also let me say when you give something, you give it with your right hand with your dominant hand. That's the way I have a passage that says that the right hand is stronger and 10,000 will fall from the right hand. Rava saw that Abaya, when he stepped back, he bowed or turned, greeting the right side first. Uh, so Rava said to him, do you think that it means to the right side, your right side? No. The small the tra kamina. It's your left side. The havi amina shal kadosh baruch which would be the right side of a sh- of shechina facing you, of the holy one blessed be. So you bow to the left and turn your face greeting the left. Osa shalom and then you turn to the right and greet the right, which is Hashem's left. Amar Rav Chia bereder Rav Huna chazino lo labai berav. So Rav Chia, the son of Rav Huna, said, I saw both Abai and Rav, the Pasi, the Mishal, the Pasiyas, the Kriyachas. Now when they take their three steps back, they're already bowing at once. So basically, Rav and Abai, they would bow, walk three steps back, turn to the, uh, turn to the left, which is the right of Shekhinah, say, Ozer Shalom and Rav, turn to the right, Uyasa Shalom, and then forward, Aleinu Baal Kali Yisrael, the Mishal. So that's the Allah stepping three steps back after the tefillah, remaining in that spot, walking back as there's already a bow, turning to the left, turning to the right. And then you remain in that spot for Shachar Samincha until the Chazan gets the Kedusha, and for Myra's at least a few moments. And in the outer uh, room, he would have a, 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 a short prayer, a short feeling. Why a short one? We'll say not, not to scare the people and say, hey, what's taking so long that he not make it out of the Holy of Holies? My master. So what to feel or what he say? Rabbi Barava, or Ravada, Rabbi Baravada, Rabbi and Rabbi, the children of Ravada, Harvai Mishmei the Rav, both said in the name of Rav that this was the tefillah that was said, and some say that the text is that of Yehuda. They said in the name of Yehuda. Amri this is what we, he would say. May it be your will, Hashem our God. That this year it should be rainy and sunny. Or, or hot. Shechuna mal yusi. Shechuna is a, is that a good thing? That it should be, that sounds like drought. Shechuna is not just sunny. Shechuna is that it's drought-like. It's, it's, it's um, uh, very hot. Ela Eima, rather it says, Im Shechuna, Tehei If it is very hot, it should also have rain to, to, to compensate. Rav Acha Bereda Rav HaMesayim Ba Meshmeda Rav Yehuda, and Rav Acha said in the name of Rav Yehuda, that, that, that he added, Lo Ya'adi Avet Shultim of the Beis Yehuda. May the, the um, household of Yehuda, of David HaMelech, not lose its, uh, not, uh, um, not lose its, its leadership of Am Yisrael. B'nei Yisrael should not need assistance from each other in their parnasa, in their, in their taking care of their family and their needs. And do not allow the prayer of travelers, which pray that it doesn't rain, come before you because the needs of the majority that need rain and the health and, of the community more important than the travelers that want not to rain so that they can walk on, on, on a dry path. Rabbi Hanina Medesa have a cause of Urcha. Shadamitra. Rabbi Hanina Medesa was traveling and the rain came. Shadamitra lay. Amma Rebena Shalom and Kolo and Kulab and Nachas of Hanina Bitsar. So he said, Master of the Universe, the entire world is happy because uh, the, the rain has come. However, Hanina. Referring to himself, the tsar is in is in is in discomfort and pain. Fasak mitra, the rain stopped. Ki also lebeisi when he came to his house when he got home. Omar he said, Rebbeinu Shalom, the master of the universe. Kol adam kula the entire world is in pain. They need the rain. V'chanina benachas, 
and I'm comfortable because I'm home. Awesome, Richard. I'm there. All right, don't try this. I mean, you can try it. Yeah, yeah I don't know if it'll. I don't know if it works that way for us. But in any event, I had I had a I had the direct one. I'm going to have Yosef. Rabbi Yosef said, Maya Hani leads to the Kohen Gadol, the Gabra Hanina Medesa. What power does the prayer of the Kohen Gadol have against the Hanina Medesa? Because he was a traveler and it stopped the rain because he's from the Hanina Medesa. Turn around, what a mice of a Kohen Gadol show you a Shaharak with philosophy. There was a story with one Kohen Gadol that was lengthy in his philo. Benimnu, Echabek Hanim Likonis, and the brothers of Kohen said, All right, it's time to go in and check on him. The God is out of his filo, and they started coming in. Who yoytze? And at that point, he started coming out. Omer lemit ne maharach bet filo sechad. They said, "Oh, you're okay. That must be you daven you on. Why did you daven so long?" Omer lehem kasha be nechem shes alalti alechem. Is it so difficult for you that I daven for you? And but I'll be smikdash shleicharev and about this holy house that it not be destroyed. Omer lo alti ragel lasiskin. They said, "No, that that that's fine. We, we love it that you daven for us, but don't do this." Share Shaninu that says in our Mishnah, Shalayarik, Shalaya Mah Bit Philosophy, that he wouldn't be lengthy, Kadeshala Lahabis as Israel, not to scare the community. And it scared us. We were worried that, that something happened to you and you weren't okay. All right. So now the Mishnah says that in the second base of Mikdash, as we saw, there was no Aron, it was just the Ark was not there. So Mishanit al Aron, when the Ark was hidden. Evan Haisasham, there was a stone there, which is the 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 Evan Shasia. The today it's uh, in the dome of the rock, the, the rock that was there. Evan Shasia, there, there was a rock protruding from the floor of the uh, of the uh base of Mikdash floor. May most of the it was there from the days of the of the early prophets. The Shasia Haisanikris, it was called Shasia. Gavai min archaeologist by three fingers. High off the ground, and he would put the pan with the coals on top of that. And then he would go and take the blood from the one who was mixing it so that it doesn't congeal. And he would go back into the place that he had already gone into, meaning to the Holy of Holies, in the place that he already stood. And he would spritz from there. One spritz, as we saw, with his finger upward. It, and then Sheva Lamata and seven downwards. And he wouldn't intend to spritz upward or downward, but rather he would spritz but rather like a hammer blow. And this is what he would count. Achas, one, because of the one that he did with his finger upward, and then Achas, Achas, one and one, and the Achas Vishtayim, one and two, Achas Vasholish, one and three, Achas Vashba, one and four, Achas Vachamish, Achas Vashesh, Achas Vasheva, one and five, one and six, one and seven. Um, all right, we're not going to get to the end of the Mishnah. Let's continue from the, this Mishnah uh, in the